Let's bring in former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and Governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley. She helped write Stand for America's new book, American Strength, Conservative Solutions Worth Fighting For. This is also her first interview since President Biden's video call with Putin, as we mentioned. I'll get to that in just a moment, Ambassador. But, and welcome, by the way, and great to see you. Thank you. What did you make of that whole situation of the video getting cut off? Did you make anything of it? I mean, Sander, it was laughable, um, it would be laughable if it wasn't so embarrassing. I mean, the idea that map was meant to show freedom of expression and democracy. And if you look at it, Taiwan is free and democratic, communist China is not. So the map was actually honest in the way that it played out. The idea that Biden was so scared about what China would think about it is another example of why we're seeing planes flying over Taiwan, why there's more aggression in the South China Sea is because China gets that Biden's scared of them. I mean, instead, he should have acknowledged the truth. And what does it say to our friends when we're so scared of their enemies that we can't even have their backs on that? What he should have done was acknowledge the truth, that Taiwan is a democratic society, that they are different than communist China, that they do have freedom of expression while China is becoming more of a communist um, state. So I, I think it's so embarrassing that this happened. And I don't care whether it's a State Department official or the White House, this is a plague that has happened year over year with bureaucracy and what's happening and the fact that we should be able to tell the truth about our friends and our enemies. And the fact that we're not puts us more in danger. Speaking of friends and the situation in Ukraine and this growing Russia-Ukraine conflict. This is a USA Today op-ed. America needs a better idea than NATO expansion to keep the peace. It says Ukraine and other former Soviet republics are proud countries. They are not, with all due respect, places we should send U.S. troops to fight and die. I'll get your thoughts on how the U.S. should proceed with this growing conflict there as you see Russia lining up along the border. After I get your response to this, this was Putin yesterday, warning of the consequences if we step in. Listen. This is Saki warning of the consequences to Putin. Listen. There was a joint statement released uh, calling on Russia to de-escalate, pursue diplomatic channels, abide by its international commitments on transparency of military activities, as President Biden did in his call with President Putin. And the foreign ministers, as they were meeting, uh, and in, in this statement also warned that any use of force to change borders is strictly prohibited under international law, and that Russia should expect that further military aggression against Ukraine would have massive consequences. Okay, so take that in, and knowing this is the first time we've heard from you since the two world leaders met one-on-one, -on -one, do you believe that Biden will stand up and show Putin's strength in this moment? I mean, not unless a miracle happens. He hasn't shown any strength since the entire time he's been in the presidency. But let's look at the bigger picture here. I mean, I think if you look at the Trump administration, I mean, President Trump and the administration, we sanctioned Russians. We fought against the Nord Stream 2. We gave Ukraine anti-tank missiles. We did everything that showed strength. Same with China. We went and countered them and showed strength. The idea, all of that was for deterrence. It kept them. You didn't see Russia pushing on Ukraine. You didn't see China pushing on Taiwan. The reason you're seeing that now is because they smell weakness from America. The reality is Putin knows that it is not popular in Russia for him to go to war with Ukraine. What he's doing is posturing, and all he's doing is posturing to go and threaten Ukraine so that we don't allow them into NATO. That's all this is. And he's going to keep pushing the envelope, and the very first request he's going to have is, we don't want you to allow Ukraine into NATO, and we don't want any of NATO to do anything to Russia. We need to push back on that. I want to, I, there's a tweet you just stuck out to me because you sort of, as you just did now, took this really big picture on what we're seeing from this administration, foreign policy and other crises. You said in D.C. we have a president and a Congress who are asleep at the wheel while Americans suffer. You said they're crippling our economy, crushing our families, endangering our streets, erasing our borders and withdrawing from the world. We're in a fight for America's future. That 
is a pretty dire warning, Ambassador. Explain your take there. Well, you know, I have always looked at America in a way that I think we can improve, we can strengthen, and that I'm proud of. And so, you know, as when I was in small business, we wanted to have jobs that could grow. We wanted to make sure that government stayed out of our way. As an accountant, we wanted a country that lived within its means. As a mom, I wanted my children to live in safe communities, in schools that, that taught the basics and consistency and gave them great opportunities. As the wife of a combat veteran, I wanted a safe America that was strong abroad. As the daughter of Indian immigrant um, parents, I wanted a country that continued to show the promise of America. All of that is being broken before our eyes by the Biden administration. And we've got to put a stop to it. I think we put a stop to it by winning the House, winning the Senate, winning governor's races. I think we put a stop to it in 2024 by showing how all of this can be fixed if we can self-correct quickly. But the problem is Biden continues to be asleep at the wheel. You can tell it's completely over his head. Kamala is absolutely absent. And we've got a Congress that doesn't get that the more you spend, the higher inflation goes, and that the deficit is only becoming more and more of a national national security threat because that's exactly what China wants. So it's really, it's tone deaf, but it's also naive in so many different ways. It's a, it's a big statement. And by the way, we are waiting on Jen Psaki. She's begun speaking at the White House. She'll start taking questions shortly. And she's likely also to not only be asked, Ambassador, about the range of issues about which we are discussing right now, but also on a report that Benjamin Hall just brought us a moment ago on the difference in what we're hearing from the Biden administration and the reality on the ground in Afghanistan and Americans left behind. It seems that we are being told two different stories and that we're not really getting the true picture still of that botched Afghanistan withdrawal. Your thoughts on that, Ambassador? I, I think it's the reason American people are not trusting the Democrats and the Biden administration. I mean, first of all, you look at America and they said that there were less than 100 Americans left and now we find out they've already brought 900 home since the withdrawal. You look at you know, the reconciliation package and the build back better, the fact that they say, oh, this is 1.7 trillion. And we find out the truth with Joe Manchin's help that it's actually 3 trillion more on the deficit. You go and you see that they're not trying to teach critical race theory in schools, yet we have proof right in front of our eyes. Everything the Biden administration continues to tell us is wrong, and the American people are starting to realize it. The idea that they say we're going to spend this money and it's not going to harm middle America. Middle America feels inflation. We haven't had this much inflation since World War II. Americans are not stupid. They can see what's happening, and I think they're going to see it all the way to the election booth. Which is why these press briefings are so crucial, and you really see them right here on the Fox News channel. We go to her when she takes questions. Ambassador, she's doing so right now. If you don't mind staying with us for just a moment, we're going to listen to Saki at the White House. Now, I want to get back to Ambassador Nikki Haley, who graciously stayed with us uh, throughout that. But perfect timing for you to respond to the question she just received there about these meetings between Vladimir Putin and President Biden. Uh, he asked for an update on the discussion on the path forward. I don't know what your takeaway is. You tell me, Ambassador. I heard that there was no updates or signs yet of de-escalation. But she did reference what she said. The White House considers a good sign that diplomatic engagements are happening. Your reaction? You know, my what I will continue to say is if you worry about Russia moving in on Ukraine, if you worry about China moving in on Taiwan, the one and only thing, I know this having dealt with the Russians and the Chinese, the best way to deal with both of them is through strength. When you deal with them with strength, then the deterrence happens. That's what Biden has got to start doing. He's got to man up and start standing up to Putin. He's got to start standing up to Xi and start showing them the American way forward. When he does that, that's when the world will be a safer place. I can hear the soundbite cut now. Biden's got a man up, says Ambassador Nikki Haley. Appreciate you staying with us, Ambassador. Thank you. And by the way, your book, American Strength, congratulations on that. Conservative solutions worth fighting for. Appreciate you joining us, Ambassador. Thank you very much.